it's Deborah from The Attic and today I want to show you part one of how you can make the easiest, simplest little journal books. Um, these are so, 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 so easy and I'm going to show you how to make these. Now you will see that uh, these have been made from two rather nice, rather beautiful papers and one which is just a recipe card that I get in my vegetable box and I've done a number of uh, different ways of using these papers because I want to show you you don't have to have beautiful papers to produce a beautiful result. Let me show you through this one first. This one has been made from a collection of papers called Wildflower Meadow. These are produced by um, Craft Consortium and these are beautiful. They're double-sided, they're 12 by 12, they're massive, the colours are amazing, there's lots of lovely little toppers that you can use. Um, these sheets, you can see I've already cut some of these away, these sheets have got a shine and a shimmer on them, like a pearlised effect. I don't often buy papers, in fact I very rarely buy papers, I prefer to make my own, but these books um, do offer something a little bit different and I wanted to showcase the papers in the simplest way I could think of that I could also share with you. I'm going to open this up. This is tied with um, a ribbon which I haven't secured at the back but I'll show you another example where I have and it is simply a flip out book like this and there are little notepads on the inside made using um, the papers from the kit or from the paper pack I should say and this side has lots of opportunities for writing in as well and there are two tags and there is a paper that's been added to the back of the tags and then tied in place with a little piece of thread this one is the same and then there are two little cards that have been made from the kit now I haven't backed these with white paper uh, to write on because I, I rather like that and I think it's faint enough that you could write over the top of it if you wanted. So all of this book has been made just with paper, folding and a little bit of gluing and then the embellishments can all be added afterwards. I'm going to show you how to make this basic book. Let me show you the next one. This book has been made using a different paper collection again from Craft Consortium. This time it's called the Herbarium and again it's 12 by 12 sheets of card. This is quite thick cardstock. Uh, it's double-sided, it's just beautiful and stunning and every now and again you'll get some um, pages where the elements have got some shine or shimmer or pearlized or some kind of a finish on them so it's more than just plain paper. Um, and again there are these uh, things that you can use for toppers all linked to the theme and there's some that I've already cut out all linked to the theme of the herbarium. So this book has been sealed with a ribbon which I have glued onto the verse so you don't lose it and this time I've added four little tags that have been made using papers from the kit. There's two there and two there. I've also made use of these little tux box here and I will show you how to make all of these things and that's just uh, great for doing a little note or you want to just capture some little phrase or saying that can just pop into these little pockets here. The, the elements from the paper pack that included these beautiful sort of toppers I've used as a cover for a little booklet and I've added white paper on the inside so I can write on that and they tuck into the pocket at the back here and I've done much the same with these pieces that go in the side here and all of these are papers from those two paper packs but you might say well it's very easy to make something pretty if you have really pretty paper to begin with and you're not wrong but I'm going to show you how you can transform other paper 
such as this sort of paper. These are the recipe sheets uh, that I get in my vegetable box each week and I keep these. I keep them because the card is quite thick and because there are useful recipes and because I can make things with them such as this booklet. This booklet is secured with a ribbon again and it's been glued on the reverse and it opens out in exactly the same way as the first two and I've used a lot of inking and a little tiny bit of stamping. I've used the pages from my recipe cards to create little booklets that tuck away in these spots here. I've added two pockets and I've made some tags that will fit in there and there's a little tag in here or a little booklet in here as well and the whole thing is very very quick very easy and it's up to you how you embellish it there's lots of <laughs> scope for you to um, add your own imaginative touches but on this one I've taken some thin fabric that I had in my stash and I've just glued it onto the front cover here because I want also to demonstrate that it doesn't matter what words are on um, a piece of paper or a page uh, from a book that you may be using it's what you then put on top of it so I've inked this up I've also added a bit of um, lace this is from an old neck curtain so this is another way that you can make a book that doesn't rely on you having beautiful papers. So I'm going to show you how to make the first piece in this video, how to make the basic shape of this sort of little journal book. And then in the second video, I'll show you how to embellish it. To make the basic journal book, this is all we need. We need some paper and a little bit of glue and some tape. I happen to be using washi tape. You could use sellotape, whatever tape you have. The page that I'm using is just under or just over 11 and a half inches long and it is just under eight and a half inches tall. I don't want to get hung up on sizes and measurements because the whole point of this is it's quick and easy and just use what you have. You begin by finding the central point of your paper and I'm just going to pinch it here and here I don't want to pinch it all the way along here because I don't want a fold line in the middle but that will be enough to show me where I do my next folds. Then you fold into the centre line and you will be able to see, you might not see it on the camera, but you will be able to see when you're doing this for yourself where your little centre point is. Then you fold the next piece up. I told you this was easy. The most difficult bit is getting it all square and then just make sure it's folded nicely. Next thing is these corners. We're going to tuck these down. So you take the corner right to the edge of the paper and again try and get it square. I am very very good at not getting things square. <laughs> If you have a bone folder, of course, you can use that to make uh, tighter creases. That is almost it. The next thing we're going to do is fold it in half. That's our centre point again. I'm going to take the tape and I'm going to uh, open this top flap up like this and I'm going to put the tape on the inside and I want it only to go halfway across the width of the tape and it doesn't matter if your tape doesn't match uh, your project because we'll be dealing with uh, covering that up when we do the second video and I show you how to do the embellishments. So when I fold this back down again the gluey part or the sticky part of the tape is uppermost and then I fold the next piece back down onto it. This tape serves two purposes. The first is it grabs everything and it makes sure that it sticks. And the second is that when you're adding glue to your embellishments on here, it means that this will trap the glue and it won't go inside and then glue the inside of your um, journal together. 
that is the first part done. That is it. It is that simple. So I hope you'll come back and join me for part two where I will show you how we add the little cover, how we add the piece of ribbon on the back, how we can embellish the front and the reverse and how we make all these little tuck spots and how we can use them. Thanks for watching. Take care.